Salutations! Welcome to week four of my virtual object experimentation devlog. We're going to start off just like last week with a little sound check for, for you, as there is going to be some pretty loud sound effects here. So this is about to be loud, just in case, make sure your sound isn't up too high. Awesome. So if that was all right, everything else should be. So let's start out with the main attraction of this week. This has been such a pain in my butt, but absolutely worth it. Um, it's a AR-15 modeled by the incredible Night Frontier on the Unity Asset Store, and then chopped apart in part by him and part by me. He made a wonderful top sight, which I'll show you in a moment. This is easily the most complex virtual object I've put together. I did not know just how complex an AR-15 was until attempting to simulate it. So where to start? Well, let's just do the loading procedure for it with a magazine, just like the handgun. Pop that in. We grab the charging lever on the rear. Pop it back. I still had a round chambered. And let that snap forward. And then we ensure that the firing selector here is on the correct setting. So that's full, that's safe. This is semi. Wonderful. And this is fully auto. Excellent. That's empty. We can dump a mag out. Grab another one here. The bolt should be locked back as we ran dry with a mag still in. So we can just hit right here, the bolt release. Wonderful, and that'll slam the bolt forward. I'll pop this back out momentarily. The charging lever, and this was even more of a pain to get right. I've been told that with this lever, if instead of letting it snap forward, if you ride it forward with your hand, the bolt tends to not come forward all the way. It won't push the round all the way into the chamber. And so to fix that, you have to slap the forward assist. Wonderful. So all that's in there. Seriously, it was such a pain. Oh, and I'm dropping things. Let's grab another mag. And then to actually aim it, we've got a couple options here. We've got, as I mentioned before, the brand new top sight which is better for short range. I'll pull this, I'll take a look down this here. Wonderful. And there's a couple options for it. We can change the aperture that's being used. This, this one's so tiny that I question its utility, honestly. Let's see if we can. Wonderful. And in addition to changing the aperture, we can actually zero it in by, at the moment, just toggling between five different elevations for the back sight. The highest will, of course, zero it in fairly close to us. Wonderful. In addition, we can pull that off and pop on an optic. For those of you who are, you know, gun folk, you'll be like, when we look through this and actually see a reticule, you'll be like, what are you doing? This is just an amplifier. I don't have a good red dot model at the moment. So in this case, it's unrealistically a combination. So with this, we can check out things at distance and try to hit them. Now you'll notice Trying to aim at something about 50 meters away like that is a pretty jittery experience. Now, I think, honestly, this is mostly my hand and not the tracking. Um, and obviously, we can't actually get this into our shoulder the way we would a real rifle. And so, this is my first attempt. It's not perfect. But the way this works is that if you grab the foregrip, instead of using the actual position of the hand, it uses a filtered version. Let me actually get some ammo here. There we go. So 
So just to compare, once the targets come back up, here it is without, here it is with. So I'm not in love with it. Um, it still drifts a little bit too much. Maybe I just need a better filtering schema for it. I also may, instead of having this trigger when you grab the foregrip, I may create a trigger volume where the shoulder is. So basically as long as the weapon is placed into your shoulder, the same sort of filtering happens. I haven't had enough time to, uh, to try out both options. Thus far, it's been a absolute blast to shoot. All right, on to the next thing. Oh, I have forgotten to do this for two videos straight, so I'm going to do it right now, because several folk have asked about with the shotgun, once you fire it and pop it open, some have asked, you know, this should it should auto-eject, or there should be some other way of getting the shells out of the shotgun other than pulling them out. I actually implemented this two weeks ago. You can actually just jerk the shotgun back and the shells become physical and they fall out. So I wanted to show that briefly. Wonderful. On to some smaller and, and goofier things. I've been playing with a number of different things. I, uh, I don't know what possessed me to do this, but do any of you remember that old toy where really crappy toy if you think about it, where you have a little can like this with a farm animal on it, and you just had to. This one's Fred the Pig. He's my favorite. And then finally, in terms of the next object, we have both a banana grenade, because why not? and a Flipzo, to not, you know, trademarks and all, lighter. So the way this works is that we can either flick it open with the touchpad and then light it, or if it wants to behave, open and shut it with the angular velocity of the controller. Flame's not perfect, but it'll do for now. <gasps> oh, that was a terrible throw if I was meaning to hit the boxes. <laughs> yeah, my, there we go. Awesome. So got all that working. And then just, just to talk about the scene for a little bit, as you can see, it's it's not the prettiest thing on the planet. I've been playing around with blocking out and with lighting schemas. Um, any of you doing VR dev know that from a performance standpoint, you need to keep lights on as few things as possible, or at least multiple lights. So right now what I'm playing around with is a schema where I have, I have a spotlight that's back up there that's hitting everything in the near field with really high resolution shadows, which is why that looks nice. And that's the only lighting, other than ambient, that's hitting everything here. And then I have a directional light with a shadow that's at a lower quality, hitting the rest of the environment. Um, that's incidentally why this area has been placed in shadow from it, so it isn't quite so obvious that the directional light isn't hitting it at all. And I'm hoping that this ends up working out to be a good schema for this environment, because I'd like to fill this up with lots of exploding targets, and other decorations, some catwalks up there, etc. So, but yeah, but seems to be running really well. I still haven't 970 tested the frame times, but on my Titan X, my GPU times are about three and a half milliseconds for this scene at its worst. So, that's working well. So yeah, so thanks for tuning again this week. I will, as always, have more next week for you. Peace.